or just go do something and yeah, shut I off will. your video. Huh? Thank you. All right. So let's call the regular meeting to order. Um, and is there any public comment for items not on the agenda or additions and changes to the agenda? All right. Hearing none. Um, as I said, we're going to open the Board of Health hearing and then put it on hold until 730. So if anybody's here for that and they want to leave and come back, they're welcome to do so. So um, I'm not sure when uh, Susan Clark and Gus are going to show up, but Judy, you put together kind of a timeline, which was helpful. Thank you. And, oh, I know, quickly, do you want to tell us about how the new phone system is? Sure. Um, a Friday, two technicians came and spent the day at the office uh, installing the new phone system. Um, and that went, it was challenging for them, but ultimately they succeeded. There's some very strange wiring in the office that we've heard about for years. Mm -hmm. um, and then today, Vic, um, I forget his last name. Uh, anyways, Vic came and he um, trained Barbara and me on the phone system. And um, it'll take a little getting used to, but it's pretty user friendly and, um, and it'll make life a lot easier in terms of just some basic functions of being able to transfer calls and every, you know, every staff person having their own little voicemail place where they can call in and get their messages and um, nice. Yeah, it's just, you know, we each have a, a console, almost like a receptionist. So that that's good. A couple little snags that uh, need to be figured out is one line is not working. And while months ago, Consolidated said it was our fault or somehow internal to the system. Uh, and then RB Tech couldn't confirm anything. The fo Integrity Communications confirmed that it is Consolidated. So we have to go back and work with Consolidated on the line that we've been paying for for years that or not years months that has not been working um the other thing is strangely enough i forgot one of the phones there's a phone in the vault and i completely okay. forgot about that it's kind of hidden we've never used it it's an emergency phone i think if you get stuck in the vault or if there's a flood or something i don't know but uh so the integrity communications will come back and connect that i think it's it's like a, a, maybe it's a landline emergency phone. So they'll okay. come back and do that. Very good. So you had put together your list. Mm -hmm. Cliff, did you want to say something about the phones? You're on mute, Cliff. Pressing the space bar was not working. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for the update, Judy, and uh, I'll figure out a good time when I can come by and get the old system and set it up over at the town hall. I have it all packed up for you. Okay, great. And we can get all the old boxes and stuff out of there, too, so those aren't taking up space. And... Okay. Thanks. So, Judy, the board is going to meet on Saturday to start looking at budget. Mm -hmm. um, and we obviously have more work to do with figuring out... Um, how we might do town meeting and you had sent an email from secretary of state's office that the temporary measures that were put in were going to evaporate the end of december and i think the legislature one of the things i think susan will talk about is the um legislature going to have to do something right off the bat yeah. about town meeting but we kind of know what the what the gist of all this is is basically anything that we would have voted on from the floor um, will be by Australian ballot, even though we haven't voted for Australian ballot given the circumstances that right that'll be we're that have requirement will be will be waived. Yep. Right, and that we're going to have to do one, maybe two informational meetings within a certain window of time. Um, so the voters can tune in and ask questions and those kinds of things. Right. So we know that. Um, how are you guys doing with getting 
reports from the various groups? Uh, good. Uh, Jay Copping just joined. I don't know if you need to tell him that it's been delayed. Yeah, um, I, Jay, are you there? Hi, uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, we had a scheduling miscommunication, so we're not going to be, be doing the health officer thing till 7.30. 7.30, okay. So you can just stay I'll on stay and down. listen. All right, I'll be here. Thanks. Okay. Um, so go ahead, Judy. Yeah, so um, I've delegated to Barbara pretty much all of the communication related to the town report, but the reports are coming in. A lot of people have met the deadline and most people, she's reminded people if they haven't met the deadline for their reports. Yeah. So it's, all, it's going, you know, according to our plan. When, so you, in a, in a different email, you said something about moving the schedule up by like a week. When do we have to? It, have won't, change, it won't change the budget. Um, you know, the budget, you need the budget by what Sandra said. What is that? January 4th? Um, I can't, I don't, I don't have it right in front of me. I'm pretty sure it's early in January. I mean, it's soon, it's soon. So uh, that won't change the select. I mean, the budget is the um, the legally required um, information that needs to be posted. And um, so, I mean, the rest is kind of, you know, extra, all the reports and mm -hmm. um, contacts and all the other things that we put in the, in the town report. Mm -hmm. So um, we might, because the information meetings you know, usually we try to get the town report out for the weekend before the town meeting to at least make sure everybody has one weekend to read it. Right. But if the information meetings are like, they have to be within 10 days before, if that yeah, happens meeting. to be a week earlier, we might want the mailing to go out a week earlier. And that might just make our end of pulling all the details together and proofing it and getting it printed a week earlier. But the budget that, you know, that's kind of the same timeline because it, it just there just won't be any wiggle room there won't be like oh we don't let's take another week to no we're going to need it because we're going to need all those numbers to absolutely line up we're going to need the warning we're going to need yep. to put it on the ballot so yeah yeah and the warning will be long because it's everything is going to be on it right and that will be i mean i can post that as soon as we have it and then it will also be printed in the town report and our I mean, one of the things is we're going to have to mail this Australian ballot to everyone in town. And I wonder if maybe this is part of what they'll talk about, you know, where, how is that expense going to be covered? Will we mail it with the town report? Will it be a separate mailing? I think it will have to be a separate mailing because Jet Service will mail our town report. And we'll do, I'm pretty sure we'll do a separate mailing because it, it, it involves special envelopes and there's just... A little more oversight in, mm -hmm. in in terms of who is still on the checklist it's just a little bit different so i wouldn't want it i don't think it can go out it would be confusing i think to have it all go out together yeah, um, and then and then would the ballots go in with the warning and how you vote on that do we have any i mean it would be just like any other election um the, the ballot essentially is the warning i mean the ballot has will have every item on it right that's being warned so We'll, we'll probably have a page that explains why it's different this year, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it'll have an envelope, a return envelope and, you know, it'll, and they'll have to sign it. It'll be just for the absentees. And then of course, we'll still have March 2nd live at the town office. I mean, the town hall, just cause we'll still have just like the primary and the general people can still come. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, we'll have, we'll have to formally decide to mail it to everybody. I think the legislature might have to, to vote to allow us to mail it to everybody. Yeah, I think that was Jim Condos's point. And I'm pretty sure they will. So yeah, um, I hope so. And, and I just found from the, an email, I just got an email from the Secretary of State that they are covering the cost of all the extra envelopes. We just have yeah. to order them. So we're, we're doing an inventory to make sure we have all the envelopes we need. And, so and we, we won't be able to run that stuff through the tabulator, so it'll all be handled. No, 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 it, we, it'll be, We'll have to plan on you know extra people and extra time to right you know, to hand count it yeah. should be pretty straightforward though because most of it's probably yes or you know a number of a budget yes or no and right. and, and a person or, or a challenger yeah yeah um and 
it's Kellogg Hubbard Library, that amount is staying the same. Sandra said VLCT is staying the same. So some of those things aren't changing, but just the same. The Kellogg Hubbard Library is a separate item. Right. Right. Barbara's also collecting the um, social service requests, and I think all, virtually all of them are staying the same, but she can give a report once we get, well, December 15th is the absolute deadline tomorrow. So then she'll yeah. be able to tell us where we stand. Okay. Anything else on um, all of this, Judy? You want to make us aware of or stuff? In terms, of the, in terms of what I'm thinking about for town meeting or town info? And yeah, all that, any of that that you um, want to enlighten I mean, us on? Well, we can go and, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what, um, what um, Sue has to say and- um, And there's and Gus. That. Yeah. So Gus. Hi. Hi, how are you? Uh, I, no big complaints for me. That's good. <laughs> so we had a little bit of a scheduling issue. So we started talking about um, town meeting stuff, just some of the basic stuff that not even you have to worry about um, because we're gonna have to break at 7.30 to do our health, Board of Health um, piece. Um, but we were just talking about, we're gonna have to have these informational meetings within, there's a certain window of time to do the informational meetings. Mm -hmm. 10 days, yep. So do you have any thoughts or any questions or anything like that for us? Um, I don't think so. I mean, I, you know, I, I know there's been some discussion about whether to delay town meeting. Um, I think you've been given the authority to do it by Australian ballot. Um, I don't know the ups and downs of what a delay would mean from a budget perspective and getting the year started. And I'm not sure we'll have enough people vaccinated if we get to May or June. Um, you think uh, the idea with May or June was that you could actually probably hold town meeting outside. That was, I think they're thinking. Yeah, and I know there are communities, I think Barrytown has their meeting in May, but um, I think you, the select board, have to figure out whether that, and the staff need to figure out whether that works for you in terms of all the things you're trying to put into motion. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I, my feeling is we should keep it at the same date that we usually have it and not move it around. I think people will get really confused. And if we can pull it all together with doing everything by Australian ballot, um, I think my opinion is we should just go for it. Yeah, I think probably people fear that once you go to Australian ballot, you don't get back to town meeting. And I do think there's a value to that, but I'm, I, I also not sure that the delay is gonna help that issue. Yeah, and if it's only for a one-time thing, we, we, wouldn't, we would not have a choice but to go back the next year and do it the way we usually do it. Yeah. And hopefully by then COVID would be history somewhat. Well, hopefully. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> so we were just talking with Judy about <clears throat> the timing of getting um, reports in and things like that. Um, when does the town, so when would the town report have to get mailed out, Judy, to cover all these bases? Do you know? Um, I don't have a calendar right in front of me, but we usually mail it. Um, so that people have it like the weekend before the yeah. town meetings on March 2nd. So we would usually probably the jet service would be mailing it like a week before that. So we would try to do, it'll, it'll need to be like mid February if we're going to have an informational meeting where people already have the, yeah. um, yeah. So it's so pretty quick. They are, so would they already have their ballots then they'd have their town report and the ballots before the informational meeting? Because how would they know? Right. right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have that calendar right right in front of me. Um, it, yeah, it, there, I, I have to wait a certain amount of time to make sure people have their petitions or have, you know, it, there's a mid-January deadline and then the warning has to be out, I think by January. It's all pretty tight, January 31st. Tight. And then we'd need to make sure, it, I have to wait on some things before we can make the warning and before we can make the ballots. Mm. Right. Yeah, I'm looking at what you had sent out. 
Um, okay, so do you feel like you guys are okay? Yeah, we'll, we'll be able to, to work it out. Um, I, yeah, it will okay. just, we'll, we'll nail down those dates. I don't think it really changes anything for the select board. The budget is what you folks need to focus on and, and nail. Yeah. It's that because so the, the warning and the ballots can have that bottom line number of what people are voting on, both for highway and for the general yeah. budget. And are you working on the warning? Well, I thought I would, you know, draft one with blank spot that yeah. we can fill in. Okay. Okay, there's Susan. Hi, Susan. Are you there? Can you hear us? Yep, I can, I'm here. Okay, hear very me? good. Um, so anyways, we had a little bit of a scheduling dilemma with timing of stuff. So we have to break at 7.30 to do a Board of Health hearing. Um, what can you tell us in a nutshell what's going on? Well, some of you have probably seen the, the stuff that the League of Cities and Towns and various articles in the newspaper and whatnot, but I think basically Vermont um, towns kind of have two main choices. You can um, uh, run, well, maybe three. You can have your town meeting as you uh, normally would in March, um, but you're going to have to do it, you know, in accordance with the health um, guidelines, which are going to be really, really hard to, to, uh, to, to we, we don't know what they are going to be in March, but if the, if the meeting were held today, well, if the meeting were held today, you couldn't hold the meeting. Um, so uh, that's one option, but um, you could um, postpone the meeting um, and um, that is likely to, that power is likely to be given to towns um, in a bill that um, legislators say they're going to uh, rush through and get signed on the very first few days of the session. So, and that seems uh, for, from all the conversations that I've heard with the uh, the chairs of committees and whatnot, that seems really likely to pass. Um, or a third option um, is to just switch to Australian ballot. As you know, for uh, you have the, the select board um, has that ability just for one year only because of special legislation that was passed at the end of the session last year. So you guys could switch to um, switch everything to Australian ballot um, and run the, uh, the election in, in March. Um, and there's some variations on that uh, uh, um, that some towns are um, looking at. And I've also talked with towns in Massachusetts. I even had a conversation with a, a Swiss official who, because um, Switzerland is the other place besides New England that has town meetings um, where they've been doing things like holding um, meetings in really, really large spaces um, in order to accommodate health guidelines. Um, you know, socially distanced within a large bill, uh, rooms, or um, the idea of switching to uh, the later in the spring would be that you could hold, possibly hold a meeting outside uh, so that you could, uh, and a lot of Swiss meetings are held outside. Um, so that, that's, that's yet another, um, you know, possibility. But um, obviously the, the simple one um, is, the, uh, is, is simply to switch to Australian ballot for one year only. Right, and it would automatically revert back to the way we used to do it, provided we're over this crisis. That's right. So I have a question then. You know how at the beginning of town meeting, you elect a moderator? Um, obviously, you can't do that. So does that go on the, on the ballot? I mean, because Gus would be helping with the informational meetings, right? Um, that's up to you. An informational meeting is different from a town meeting. Um, an informational meeting that precedes an Australian ballot vote is actually a meeting of the select board. So um, it would be, it, it's not run like a town meeting. It's, I mean, you can run it, you know, you, it, it uses um, Robert's rules the way uh, your select board uh, does, but mm -hmm. it is, you would run it the way, um, you know, you would run a public hearing. So, I mean, a lot of towns that do use Australian ballot and have informational meetings, do ask their moderators to run the informational meeting. So that's that's your prerogative if you want to as a yeah. okay. Um And you can, and I, uh, you, you would, but you would still, the any elections can't happen. Um, for example, if you have an informational meeting um, 
like this, a Zoom meeting. Um, you can't have an election. You can't right. have, make, make binding decisions. And so um, I think your your moderator is is moderator until the next right. meeting. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we would probably want Gus's help in running informational meetings if he's willing. Yeah. But Judy had, Judy had a question. Well, just a statement. I mean, we, we elect our moderator for a year and that would mean that he could automatically be the moderator for the, the next town meeting or any town meetings we might, special meetings we might have once we can start meeting. So it might be worth voting him in for the year. Right, so we'd have to put it on the on the ballot. Right, right. Okay, that's not, that sounds right to me. You might I mean, that makes sense, but a lot of times legal stuff doesn't make sense. So, sorry, lawyers. Um, what else, Susan? Are you hearing or learning? I mean, are some towns electing to postpone until the nicer weather so they can hold it outside? Yeah, well, when I, I, I attended the, a meeting that was, it was basically a think session of the House and Senate uh, Government Operations Committees. Um, and all they managed to pass at the end of the session last year was that, that bill that said towns can switch to Australian ballot. They had lots of other ideas, but that's what they, that's what they were able to agree on and go and get through. Mm -hmm. um, and um, this time, I think they've heard from towns. They mentioned the town of Kirby. They mentioned the town of Dummerston as two places that really wanted to the the option of being able to postpone their meeting. So I think that there are some towns that have that energy and um, that interest that will pursue it. Um, and. Um, uh, but but I, I, I don't know. I mean, most of the towns, I mean, this is just anecdotal. I've just talked to some folks and um, I, it's obviously pretty tempting just to go to Australian ballot for one year because it's just, we just don't know anything about COVID and uh, what an outside meeting would look like. And, you know, the, the, the reluctance of course is, um, you know, you, you, you want to be very, if you do make this decision, you'd want to be really, really clear with your citizens that this is one, one time only and we'll see you next year, you know, um, yeah. and it, you, I mean, literally you only have the ability, the legal ability to change it for one year, but, but, but there's also just um, setting a, a precedent and, and setting expectations and I think it would be important to communicate. Yeah, I mean, I think this is, the, the legislature only granted it for just this one year. That's right. So if we were going to continue to have Australian ballot, we'd have to go through that whole process um, another year. The, the decision to switch to Australian ballot has to be made by the method that, um, you, you know, if you were going to switch to Australian ballot, you would have to make it um, on, uh, if you were going to do that in a future year, you'd have to make that decision from the floor. Right. Yeah. right. So, so Jim, Jim's on because he's waiting for us to do our board of health. Jim, did you have any comments or thoughts, questions? Oh, um, there we go. Can you there hear you me now? Yep. Um, I'm just hearing anecdotally, my clients are generally the consensus is to go for Australian ballot voting this year, get through the year and see what happens next year. Um, one, one concern that I've had about delaying town meeting is that um, what happens if we delay it till June for let's say, but in June we still can't hold a meeting. And then um, our fiscal year starts on July 1st. Right. Uh, we don't have a budget, we can't set a tax rate. We've set back the clock or shot ourselves in the foot. So, so the most, yes. every, everyone I've talked to is just gonna bite the bullet and do Australian ballot. Yeah, that would be my concern is the budget. If you don't do it till May or June, it could be problematic. Well, and even if we could do it outdoors, a vision of having a an outdoor meeting in the middle of black fly season. <laughs> oh, yeah. Most fun. Good point. Good point, Gus. Come on, Gus. We're hardy Vermonters. We'll be <laughs> It could be a way to get the Adamant Black Fly Festival going again. There you go. And we could all have nets and masks still. It might uh, help us avoid some long-winded discussions. There you go. Does anybody Please. else have any questions or thoughts? 
So I just, mean, we're obviously not completely all set in stone here, but it sounds like we're going in the direction of doing it by Australian ballot, holding it on the time that we normally would um, and for the schedule. So I think my, my, my questions are, go ahead. my questions, uh, every question I'm thinking of relates to what's the, what's the process for deciding, is there a timeline for deciding and announcing to the town and then within that process, then we... Um, yeah. Do we have to vote to do this, in other words, right? Well, yeah, vote and then, and then as Susan just mentioned, the thoughtful communication about, because, you know, there will be people who will, we'll, we'll have to explain it why this is the best option over each of the uh, each of the other options you know stuff like that what's our process so do we need do we need to vote to do this susan or jim or gus i, I think you do yes it would be a decision that you would make as a, as a as a select board okay yeah that's what i was reading through some of the vlct uh stuff it sounds like that's what has to happen the select board needs to vote and make that decision Okay, yeah, they, the VLCT thing with the Q&A was really pretty helpful. Yes. Guys, They've got a lot of great materials and, and it's, an, it's a growing uh, supply of materials. They've, yeah. um, on, you know, and I know they have a workshop coming up. If you switch to Australian Ballot, they have a workshop coming up to tell people how to, how to do that. Mm -hmm. That's right, I saw that. Gus, you were gonna say something else before? No, I was just gonna ask, um, if we're scheduling informational meetings, just be good to know when you want to schedule them for. Yeah, that's a good point because um, we're going to need to know. Yeah, good point. And that may also have an impact on like when the town report goes out. And although that may, I don't know how much that can be moved up earlier so people have that information in, mm -hmm. in advance. Yeah. Uh, Cliff? I, I was only glancing through the thing, but as I recall in the VCLT um, materials, I think the informational meetings have to be held within 10 days of the actual town meeting day. Yeah, they do. So there's a window there that we have to figure out when we're going to, we, we first need to vote on the process of how we're going to do town meeting. And then we need to look at scheduling the informational meetings within that 10 day window. And then how soon to send the material out, the town report, the warning and ballot items. I wonder if I you can make, how... I wonder if you can make the warning. Can you make the warning the ballot? So they can vote on just that one so you say, I'm picturing like the, the warning with the highway budget, general budget, and a box that says yes or no, and it's all one document. So it's not so many pieces of paper. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Judy? Um, well, a warning is a separate piece that kind of says, hear ye, hear ye. And then the ballot is something with boxes that we that people X and have very specific directions on how to vote. So they need to be two different yeah. pieces of paper. Um, okay. I mean, if we do get really tight on the publishing, cause we, our, our annual report has gotten to be a very sophisticated art piece almost. Mm -hmm. we, could, we could really strip it down and send out the budget, the warning and a little, this is why we're doing it this year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And and let people know that their ballots will be coming. I, 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 I'd have to think hard about having that all, the ballots all in there. Maybe, maybe that would be a way to go. I'd have to think about that. Yeah, because we could, if we could put the warning in the town report like we usually do, and then have the ballot as a separate. Well, item. It's, yeah, the, the, the warning has to go on the website. It has to be posted. It has, you know, there's, there's laws around the warning. And don't you, if you don't, if you mail it out within a certain amount of time, then you don't have to post, you don't have to publish the whole warning in the paper. Right, yeah, there, if you meet your deadline, that avoids putting it in the paper. And it's not a good idea to do that. People don't really read papers anymore. No, they don't. 
Okay, last few minutes com comments. Um, you, uh, I'm not sure how much amendment you uh, guys are used to seeing in Calis, um, in okay. Gus and others, but um, people will need to understand that an informational meeting is just that, and that the difference between a floor meeting and Australian ballot, you know, <laughs> afterwards yep. people are gonna say, oh, Australian ballot, it was so easy and we got way more voters. Why don't we always do it this way? And so, so what one of the downsides is that they, they voters lose their power um, to amend. Um, there, there is no um, ability. That's a, that's to a make really changes. good point. So how do you, so because you can't do amendments, your vote is either yes or no. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Paul Gillis used to say that you're, you, you have a super limited vocabulary. The voters' vocabulary is limited to yes or no. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> ah, good point. Well, that certainly will make it so things go faster. People this, can, I mean, this. at an informational meeting, they can say lots of things, but not right. that is finding. Yeah. Right. And the informational meeting comes after the everything is sent, right? It's really answering right. questions to inform the yes or no vote. Right, yeah. And are we, do we, how many informational meetings do we need to do? And, and then the question is, how many do we wanna do? You know the answer, Susan? I think you only have to do one. Jim, maybe, or, or maybe um, Judith knows. I, I believe that you, um, uh, unless Australian ballot requires one informational meeting, but mm -hmm. you know, and it could be the kind of thing that was recorded and people could see it later, maybe if they missed it, or you can have two. Um, I, I like I, the idea of recording it and having it so people could tune in. Even if we had more than one, there, we can always post them, the recordings. Denise, I just wanted to um, make you aware of the time. My clock says 7.32. Yep. Thank you, Rose. Well, we're not done, obviously, discussing all of this. Um, so if you think of anything, Gus or Susan, we may have more questions. And I'm sure we'll be asking Jim questions. Um, so if we're, if everybody's, if everybody's good, we'll move on to our um, Board of Health. Okay. Right. Thank you. All nice right. Thank you, you so much, Susan. Bye, Gus. Yes. Really yes. Thank you for inviting me. Happy to be here. Thank you. Take care. Take care. So, so I, I am, I have recused myself from this topic, folks, for various reasons, mm -hmm. um, and in keeping with proper small town recusal, I'm actually going to step away from the conversation and leave you all to have it without my presence okay. and I do ask that somebody just let me know what um, you can text me can somebody text me when that when this part of the meeting is over so I can rejoin Cliff do you have that ability yeah what number can I text you at Sharon 802-595-5888 uh, Five nine five five eight eight eight. I'm going to put you into the waiting room as well yep. as you're stepping away. And then when we're ready to bring in, I'll bring you back in from the waiting room, shoot you a text saying we're ready for you. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Sharon. Okay. So I am going to call the Board of Health meeting to order. This is regarding um Mary Ann Truman at 1238 Lightning Ridge Road. And um, Cliff has documents he can call up. Ms. Truman was served with a notice about this hearing. Um, Jay is here. But I'm going to ask anybody that wants to speak in regard to this matter, and if anybody tunes in later, um, they'll need to take the oath as well. So. I don't believe the select board needs to be sworn in, but um, Wilson and Jay, I'm gonna ask you to raise your right hand. Okay. Jay, do you have your hand up? I do. Okay. So the oath, under the pains and penalties of perjury, do you solemnly swear that the evidence you give in the cause 
Under consideration shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Please answer. Either say yes or I do. I do. Yes. Okay. We barely hear you, Jay. How about now? Okay. That's better. All right. All right so let's take this from the top. Um, Cliff, can you call up the health officer's report, please? Okay. Stand by, please. And Katie, let's, can we note, Katie, for the record that Ms. Truman um, has not yet tuned in when she was given notice of the hearing. So I'm not sure what's the best way to do this to um, keep it simple and timely. Um, Jay, do you wanna give us a quick review of what you've done to date? And, yeah, Jim, I think that's and Jim, feel free to weigh in. Yeah, I'd also just like it the record to reflect that Ms. Truman did reach out to you today, Denise, by email. Yes. And you did uh, let her know uh, when she could participate in this proceeding this evening. And you did send to her the Zoom instructions on how to connect. So um, let's just make sure that that also gets in the record. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. So I think everybody has read this or had an opportunity to. So Jay, do you want to give us a quick, concise rundown? Yeah, sure. So I'll try to be brief with it. Initially, uh, there was a, back in early August, a request from the upstairs tenant who was no longer there for an inspection uh, based on some concerns at that time. So that inspection took place. And the downstairs tenant Truman uh, also consented to have an inspection of her um, apartment at that time. And then a follow-up was requested by Mr. Lilly um, early October, at which time I think some documents went out to Ms. Truman to allow us to do that. She was given the proper notices and uh, myself Mr. Lilly and uh, Wilson uh, went over to the apartment on the 30th of October. You can see this report here. And we did that inspection. So it took to quickly back up in early August when I inspected the basement apartment, there was a fair amount of um, clutter in the apartments, uh, but you could still move around. There was mildew, um, some staining on the ceilings in the bathroom and some pretty unsanitary conditions unsanitary conditions in the kitchen, um, <clears throat> which on the October 30th inspection, uh, the kitchen was still cluttered. It, there weren't the flies present in the sink that there were on the first time. However, the bathroom was worse in terms of um, the mildew, the mold, the stain, peeling, uh, and, and just general conditions. If anyone has seen the photos, they can see what that looks like. The second concern was more from a fire safety standpoint, a couple of things where the uh, apartment was much more cluttered on the 30th of October than it was on the 19th of August, uh, making it really difficult to navigate throughout uh, the rooms of the apartment, uh, including significant difficulty in getting in and out of the master bedroom. We did not go in there, but you could see it from the doorway in our photos of that. There are also, uh, there's a, a smoke detector missing from above one of the bedrooms. I can't say for sure when that was removed. I don't know if Ms. Truman removed that between August and October, um, or if it indeed wasn't there when she moved in. So uh, I'm less concerned with you know, current tenant having removed that. And uh, I think Mr. Lilly at one point had told me he's happy to replace or place smoke and carbon monoxide detectors in that apartment. There is one detector at the rear of the apartment above the door that leads to the back entrance. Um, so there's one total uh, detector in the entire apartment. 
So a couple of the concerns are one, there's uh, there's an adult down in the basement, obviously. There are two children down there. There were, and there may be again, parents in the upstairs. So with a, a real lack of one, uh, safe egress from that basement apartment, two, lack of smoke and carbon monoxide detectors, and three, concerns of mold, even though it may be, if, a, if an expert were to look at it, which I'm certainly not, um, you know, would say this is a huge concern or it's not a huge concern or requires some minimal cleaning. Uh, but those are the concerns, the, uh, the clutter, the unsanitary conditions, especially the bathroom, the lack of detectors. Uh, when we were in there on the 30th, uh, Ms. Truman was not there, but she she did come at the end of the inspection and requested that we leave, which we did. We were done with the inspection at that point. Um, I tried to return um, later on, and I off my head don't recall what date that was for a follow up, and she did not allow us. I think that was the 13th of November, actually. Yeah. Did not allow myself or uh, Constable Hughes to enter without a warrant. Um, and so we didn't proceed to do anything at that point, and there's been nothing since. Documents that, that Jim has drawn up for us in terms of an intent to seek a health order, asking that these conditions be mitigated to the best of their abilities, and um, move on from that point. So those are the and, it, and the initial one of the big reasons that Mr. Lilly asked for that follow-up inspection started with a large amount of trash outside the door of the basement apartment, which I had seen myself on a drive-by at one point. Uh, Mr. Lilly did remove that trash himself and clean that area up and place it up by the roadside. So he did, the, the landlord took care of that. Uh, but I saw later on that there was trash again starting to gather outside and, and overflowing a little bit on the inside of the apartment. So, so that's the nutshell. So Jim, the sheriff, you have confirmation that Ms. Truman received notice you have confirmation from the sheriff that that was delivered yeah she was served with a notice of intent to seek a health order and a copy of the proposed health order and a copy of jay's report uh she was it was um i believe it was thursday of last week i haven't got the, haven't received the return of service but i got a telephone call from the sheriff telling me that he had served her the deputy sheriff so so that means that she actually took the envelope or whatever it was in hand yep Okay. Now, does she have a certain amount of time to respond to that or not? This hearing is her opportunity to respond to that. Okay. Um, do you have anything else to add, Jim? Um, no, we've got a part of the materials that were given to you were a proposed health order. Yeah. Um, I think what Jay's asking for is relatively straightforward. Um, he's asking for an order that all trash, recyclables, and food scraps be removed from the apartment and properly disposed, that the bathroom, kitchen, laundry, bedrooms, and large living space be cleaned in a general sanitary condition, and any visible mold or mildew be removed. He'd mentioned earlier uh, about mold in the, in the bathroom, in the apartment, and that all personal belongings not disposed of shall be located so that egress from the apartment is not impeded. It was the general concern about just clutter in the apartment. And uh, if there were a fire or reason to have to leave the apartment rapidly or quickly, um, some of that stuff could actually block the egress from the from the apartment. Mm -hmm. So to get that stuff straightened out. It's not a big lift um, here uh, to get this taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but that's just basically what the, that would that would be the order. Um, I think a deadline of perhaps by the end of the year uh, December 31st would be appropriate given we've got the intervening holidays, some time to get the work done. Um, we might also want to add in the health order to uh, an opportunity for Jay to go back to the apartment and reinspect to confirm that uh, uh, the order has, come in, has been complied with. Yeah, I would think he'd have to do something like that so we know that she has yep. complied with the order. Now, what happens if she refuses? Uh, we'll have to deal with that when it comes up. Okay. I think I think that I would add that, um, you know, one of the things we would emphasize, especially if Mariana were present at this meeting, is that this isn't a vendetta. This is a, this is a health concern for her and two children that are there, a health concern for, and a fire safety concern for anybody living above them. You know, you would always hope that there wouldn't be a fire of any kind. Yeah. Um, 
And, and there's also a responsibility if they were to look through the statutes um, for tenants to take care of a place as they should and, and not cause it to be in a situation where it's in violation of a health code or presenting a potential safety issue for themselves or other. Um, you know, those are those are my concerns. And again, it's, it's not a vendetta. I did an inspection initially in August at the behest of the tenants. I did a second inspection at the behest of the landlord. You know, we, we do whichever anybody wants and, and try to keep all parties happy and communicating. And um, you know, ultimately, we're concerned for safety and, and doubly concerned uh, myself as a firefighter for children in the home. We don't want anybody to be hurt. We don't want anybody to be ill or be in a situation during a pandemic that's untenable for them. Yeah. Now, I did see something in some of, somewhere in these documents about um, there was no sign of rodents or bugs or anything like that, correct? Yeah, I didn't know, you know, I didn't do a close inspection of the bedding um, in there. There was a pet of some sort. We didn't look into the cage. It's a small cage. Uh, I don't know if it's a chinchilla or, you know, something else in there. I had spoken with the fire marshal's office and they would tag on to any inspection. Uh, you know, they are concerned as, as well about the inspection and they would want to be part of the next inspection to just look at the overall uh, apartment building, the Know, especially the basement as well as the upstairs and uh, you know just make sure there are no violations on the part of tenant or landlord and make sure again that it's a safe um, environment so the fire marshal uh, I have been in touch with and he would be part of any inspection that we can set up in the future that's been one of the difficulties is getting allowance to come in to the department to do any inspections um, she hasn't the tenant has not validated our authority to do that as health officers or fire marshals and um, somehow we need to get beyond that. So Jim, I got a couple of questions with regard to that then. Do we put in the order that the fire marshal wants to be involved in further inspection? I think that we let the fire marshal know when when Jay would be returning to do a follow-up inspection. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the town of Callis doesn't enforce the life safety code of the state of Vermont. So um, I, I'm very reluctant to include in an, in an order um, okay. any provision that says that the, that the fire uh, marshal has to be included in an inspection. Okay. Um, it, is, it is one of the sort of difficulties of this is that part of Jay's inspection responsibilities include things that are within the state's life, uh, life safety code that the town through the Board of Health can enforce. Um, so we have this sort of dual jurisdiction going on. Um, we have did to you say, did, you, did you say can't enforce or can't? cannot? Yes, okay. we don't have the okay. author authority to enforce. So we have this sort of dual jurisdiction going on and, and sort of efforts to coordinate but we can't enforce the state's life safety code as part of the this health uh, board of health process. Okay, Rose, Cliff, questions, comments? Uh, Cliff? Everything seems to be pretty much in order. I appreciate Jay uh, doing the legwork here. To give us a good idea of what's going on and thanks Wilson for helping out as well. Um, no other questions. Thank you, Jim, for their overview. Yep. Rose? Yeah, I just want to say, um, echo what Cliff just said, you know, thank you, um, Jay, for your efforts and Jim as well. And, um, you know, um, a, a fire would just be so tragic. Um, so this is a serious issue and um, hopefully it will be resolved soon. Okay, yes, and thank you. I know this has been very time consuming and a huge learning curve. So I really appreciate all that you've done, Jay, and Jim's help and Wilson, thank you for being back up. So what is the process now? Um, the tenant hasn't appeared. It sounds like we're all in agreement. So the Board of Health would now make a motion to approve the proposed health order. Yes, um, and I think you'd want to um, perhaps um, with, a, with a slight modification of the proposed health order, 
uh, to include a date of a follow-up inspection by Jay. Okay. Okay. So I would make that motion, including the date of follow-up inspection. Um, would anybody like to make a second? Before a second, I would propose an amendment, friendly amendment. Mm -hmm. That we authorize the select board chair to sign on behalf of the entire select board. Yeah, the board, it's the board of health, right? Yes. The, on behalf of the board of health. Yep. I'll second the motion. Okay. Are we, have we done things procedurally correctly, Jim? I think you're looking good. All right. So let's vote Except on it. You got to put it, you have to put a date in there. We will. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we will. We will fill in all the blanks, Rose, okay. um, and and dot our I's and cross our T's before it's signed. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So you ready to vote, Rose? Yes. I. I'm an I. Cliff. I. Okay. So I guess we're done. I will Denise. thank you, folks. We'll work Denise. on a time. Yep. I will. I will. Um, Take the proposed health order, make a couple of modern, modern, minor modifications to it to include a date, and send that to you. And and we'll you can get that signed, and we'll get it out. How does that get delivered to her? Is that by sheriff again? We're going to have to see. Statute doesn't actually specify how it gets delivered, so we might. Um, we'll have to look into it. Okay. Okay. Wilson, did you want to say something? You had your hand up. Yes, there are two children that live in that apartment, and I believe they're in danger. Okay. I think that's been a, um, relayed to the appropriate st uh, state officials, correct? Yep. Okay. Thank you, Wilson. I'm glad you're concerned. All right. I guess that ends our, do we need to make a motion to adjourn the Board of Health? Sure. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Okay. So I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Okay. Rose, you want to vote? Aye. I'm an aye. Cliff? Aye. All right. Thank you all. And again, thank you, team. Thank you. What a, what a great effort to get this done. Okay. Thank Thanks, you very much. Paul. I will be in touch tomorrow, Denise. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, all. Thank Bye -bye. you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Um, ping in Sharon to bring her back in. Okay. I think I'm going to exit unless I am needed for something that you see on the agenda. Um, I don't, I can't think of anything at the moment. Did you have any parting words, madam? A am I the madam? Yes, you are. <laughs> oh. um, I'll just let you know that the website designing, I'm going back and forth with the consultant and working on that. So that's beginning to move. Yay. Um, all the, all the uh, pieces of equipment have been ordered that are part of the grant and we're arranging pickup and delivery and all of that. So I think we've moved ahead on the grant uh, purchases. And I yeah, think that was a real, that was a real effort, wasn't it? Yeah, it, yeah. teamwork. Again, yep. a lot of these projects are teamwork and, um, yep. and I'll, I, Denise, out of a public meeting, I'll work with you on sort of the timing of and drafting of the the uh, warning and all of that for town information yeah. meeting dates and all of that. We'll work on that. Okay. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Thank thanks. you. Thank Have you. A good evening. Thanks, Judy. All right. Is Sharon back? Not yet. I need to step away for a minute because I'm not getting decent uh, cell reception. I got to move closer to my point because okay. the text isn't going through. So I'll be right back. Okay. Everybody go get a glass of water. Hey, Bill Powell, are you there? Yes, Denise and Select Board and others, I am here. Okay. Were you joining us for something that we need to talk uh, about or? No, just general pure interest. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll go get my water while we're waiting.
Hey, everybody. Hi, Sharon. Denise stepped away to go get a glass of water. She'll be right back. I'm back. Hi, Sharon. Long time no see. <laughs> hey, guys. Okay. I'm going to so put you on mute because there's music blaring in the background here. And, and actually, I'm going to step away and go turn it off. Um, so we don't have any updates. Uh, Judy gave us some updates. Um, while Sharon's doing that, we need to sign the George Road grant reimbursement form. And it looks like from the form that, it, I don't know why, but they want everybody to sign this. So I would propose that you authorize me to sign it and I list everybody's names on the form. Does that make sense? It's just, just, it's just so we can get our money back from the George Road grant. That's yep. fine. Yep. Okay, so would somebody like to make that motion? I move that we authorize Denise to sign the George Road paperwork on behalf of the entire select board and uh, list the board members' names on the paperwork. Second. Okay, let's vote on that. Rose? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Cliff? Mm, aye. <laughs> okay, and I'm an aye. Thank you. I'll get that right out tomorrow. Okay, next up, and I'm gonna turn the reins over to Sharon to talk about the East Cal's Community Trust Snow Removal and Agreement. If Cliff, would you call that up? And yep. go ahead, Sharon. Hey guys, I saw Mark there a second ago. He's there. I'm here. There you go. Mark, why don't you drive on this when Cliff gets it up for us, and then we'll go around and ask if the board has questions. Um, <clears throat> so I tried to keep this simple. It's, it's in the form of a letter agreement, but it, you know, it's a contract. And it basically, the idea, I really wanted to put two things in this. One is make it really flexible. Basically, I wanted to give the town total discretion. You know, if the road commissioner, if it's a huge snowstorm and he can't get to it, he can't get to it. You know, it's, it's uh, in fact, probably no one will get to buy, get the food. But um, I, that's why I put in that, yes, the, the, that the town before deliveries, the town in its sole discretion will cause the removal of the snow from the area right in front of the porch. And if for any reason the, the town determines that it would be an undue burden, it can suspend the removal and just has to tell us. Uh, and we indemnify the town and hold it harmless. Um, and I wanted to also make it clear because I think, I think that was an important thing for the select board and for good reason you know, the select board wanted to make it clear that this is not a kind of common thing that it would do, that it's doing it because of the COVID emergency and because of the, the real need for callous residents because of the COVID emergency. And, the, um, and so I put in the whereas is that, you know, the town general, while the town generally limits snow removal to public thoroughfares, the pandemic constitutes a unique situation that's can created a substantial increase in the number of callous residents who serve, suffer from food insecurity. So, and that in fact, the closure of the stores exacerbated that by creating a food desert. So that's all it is really. It's, it's a one-time thing and I tried to keep it simple, but I'm happy to answer any questions or respond to any comments. Is that Sharon, what you wanted? Uh, yes. And I will start by asking, I lost my gallery view. Um, assuming you're all still there somewhere. Uh, Rose, yeah, do, you have, have do you have questions? I don't have any questions. I thought it's, um, it's thorough, it's <clears throat> very well written and um, I support the effort. Um, it's, it's, we're in a pandemic and food insecurity is real. And 
just like Mark said, with the store closed, that even compounds the matters. So um, I generally um, wholeheartedly support this. I think it's a great idea. Cliff? Yeah, um, just trying to understand the duration of the agreement. The way I wrote it, Cliff, I just, I don't know. I don't think, and, and help me out, Denise, are you there? I'm here. You, yeah, I'm here, though. my impression is that this isn't gonna last that. The food distribution isn't gonna go on forever, right? Yes, wearing my ECCT hat, um, the, it's likely to run out the end of December unless um, the federal government does something to um, provide additional funding. If they do, then we hope we can continue to do this. I mean, I'd like to see us, I would like to see us be a distribution point for these people. So at the most, it would last over the winter. But the way I wrote it is, it's just effective when we sign it and that anybody can, either of us can just terminate the agreement with seven days notice by email or a phone call. Yeah. Okay, well, that makes it clearer, thank you. I think to that, to that point, I was gonna say um, a couple of points of clarification. Mark, when you were speaking, you mentioned one time and when you say one time, you are, you're really talking about this uh, season, right? This yeah, winter, this, season. this, this right. winter season. So I think for that purpose, I might ask if you would amend and how yeah. do folks feel about this, amend it to say um, for the, you know, for the 20 F for the 2021 winter season. So that that Just part is really right now. How about yeah. this agreement is effective upon execution by both parties with a duration through the 2020-2021 winter season. Yes. Does that do it? Thank you. That does do it. And then the other thing that I that occurs to me is when you're gonna notify the town. Um, this, I think notifying the town is fine, but uh, select board, I think what we want is to delegate the receipt of that notice to Alfred as road commissioner to coordinate plowing. Am I right about that? Okay, yes. I will add through the road commissioner. Yeah, or you don't have to, but but that's- Why don't we do that? Just to... Sure, just so whoever has the letter, the yeah. letter says, I called the treasurer, I don't know why I didn't get, <laughs> yeah. But that's yeah, you Sharon know. didn't answer the phone. Okay, right. We'll notify yeah, the town through the road commission. Okay. Yeah, Alfred will be on first. So we're delegating. I think in this conversation, we are we are asking we we will be delegating receipt of that communication to him. We don't have to be involved in that. Right. Okay, Mark. Thank you very much for doing this and getting it back to us. Who would you like to have it? Should I put by anybody in particular in terms of who signs for the town? I will. I will sign as the vice chair um, and I will ask as we vote for the members of the board to include in a motion that I sign as, as long as everyone's okay with that. Your name's on here. Okay. And Katie, could you capture a to-do for uh, Denise or one of us to follow up with Alfie and make sure he understands the terms of the agreement? I'll do that. I will send that to him tonight. Thanks, Sharon. Okay. My intent, and I'm hoping it's the way it works, is that, you know, if it's Thursdays and there really is snow on the ground, when Alfie pays, pay, you know, when somebody on the road crew is just doing back street, they'll just swing, instead of turning right on Route 14, they'll turn right 10 feet sooner, make a pass and go on, you know, just go on. Mark, if Alfred has questions, are you the point person? Yeah, who, who, yeah okay. I can, yeah, I can talk to him. Either and will you- or Denise, one or, Either of us is fine. Okay, so either Mark or Denise in her capacity yeah. as ECC board member. Right. ECCT, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, did we hit everything that we needed to on this one, guys? I think so. I think so. Okay. Is there a motion to 
uh, sign the letter that Mark has presented to us with the changes we've discussed and the signature coming from me on behalf of the board. Is there that motion? So move. I'll second. Okay, any other discussion? Looking around the black screens. Okay, all in favor? Uh, Rose, I'll start with you. Aye. Cliff? Aye. And I'm an aye. Sharon, are you Sharon at, what is it? It's, it's uh, Callis SB, we're all the same formulaic, C-A-L-A-I-S-S-B, -S so two S's. Sharon. Oh, Sharon. So it's the same as mine, uh, Mark, except for substitution. Sharon, Callis Sharon at. No, Callis SB. Sharon, Callis SB. Sharon. Sharon. S-H-A-R-O-N at gmail.com. Got it. Okay. okay. It's coming right to you. Okay. Thank you. And I'll well, actually, well, no, I, I'll sign it and I'll, what, what do you call it? I'll scan it and send you the scan. Perfect. Okay. All right. That sounds excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a good evening. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Thank Take you, care. Mark. Yeah, Appreciate sure. My it. pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Um, let's talk about the Brookfield generator contract. Um, we've got the Brookfield generator contract sent to us, um, indicating and asking us to pay the entire bill. Last season we paid half and we asked the school to pay half. Um, so I would propose that we have a discussion about that and see what people think. Um, Rose, comments? I, I think I remember last year that we decided just to pay the whole thing because we're all kind of the same pot of money that's what I remember. We used to split it with the school. Um, yeah, I, Katie's shaking her head. But I think last year we decided just pay the whole thing. That may be true last year. I know other years we have split it. And I tried to right. do some research on it. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't have much luck doing a minute search. And I asked Sandra. Denise, what is, before we go further, Somebody, can somebody orient me? What's the Brookfield generator for? The Brookfield generator, we have one at the town office and one at the school. And they get serviced, I think we signed up for twice a year to have um, the contract, I mean, to have the generators serviced. And it's used if there's a power outage. For instance, let's say there's a power outage, um, this way the school can keep functioning. And it's also the school is our shelter if there's um, an issue and we need to open up a shelter. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I put in, I think I sent an email <coughs> that um, Sandra had mentioned a couple of things and I think it's in the folder for tonight. Do you see it Cliff? <coughs> You're on mute Cliff. <clears throat> Hang on, I'm looking at the agreement, um, seeing if there's anything else in there. Because <clears throat> I did follow up with Sandra and ask her about payments. Yeah, and I it might have something to do with the Unified School District. That's why we just paid it instead of um, going through the unified school district. Yeah, here's the email from Santa. In 2018, we paid the towns and the schools in full. In 2019, we paid only the towns. Hmm. <coughs> so, so what's the worst thing that happens if we authorize only the town's half? Then they have to pay the other half. Mm -hmm. They, the school, through. Right, right. And how to, what's the mechanism through which that happens? We vote on it and 
we let them know that we're paying half and that it's their responsibility to pay the other half. That sounds like a good start. Yep. Uh, so that, would that be a motion? I make the motion that we approve, is it literally half, just half? We just cut it in half? Yes, and the full, <laughs> but we, we first, first we have to decide, do we want it annually or um, two visits a year? So that would be the first piece that we have to decide. And then second, I would think we would want two separate motions maybe that the town agrees to pay half and send the invoice for the remaining half to the school district. I don't know. I don't know anything about generators, but they must involve gas. Yep. And they have to, and if it's like my neighbor's generator, it comes on as a check-in and, and I, every once a week. And I think the one at the town office does that automatically. It's an automatic check in, but they come and service it probably, it probably has oil. So maybe they have to change the oil, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. I think they're run on propane. Stuff that runs on any fuel makes me nervous. I would, <laughs> that's not a mechanical opinion. That's an emotional opinion <laughs> twice a year. Yeah. So is that a motion to um, sign the contract? choosing the pro program two, which is two visits a year. Does anybody, Bill Powell's on, Mr. Energy. Oh. Sharon, sure, that's uh, flattering, I assume. But in this case, I, I, I guess my reaction is, um, first, to set the fuel um, properly, it's propane. Um, and if Denise says it's an auto transfer start, um, that's significant. I know the school one is, I don't know about the town hall, town office. Um, you know, what's what's the question, Sharon? I don't mean to duck. I, I'm looking for what it is that you're looking for my opinion on, please. Uh, we, were, we were presented with the question of how many times a year should we have these guys serviced? And I then, said, from an emotional place, more is better. <laughs> well, um, reaction, um, it really, it, more than anything, it depends on the warranty that comes with the generator, that some warranties require that this service be done. Um, I don't think it's a big deal with propane units. It's much more of a deal with diesel or gasoline, my opinion. Um, there are oils. Um, the one at the school for sure is an auto transfer start, meaning when the grid goes down, it starts. And so those have oil pans and batteries that need to be uh, maintained. Um, and so that's a higher level of maintenance than would be something that someone has to press a button on or something like that. And again, I don't, I'm not familiar specifically with the town office one. That may have the same requirement. So if that were the case, it would be a good idea. Protect your investment. Um, there's really not a lot to do besides change oil. And the amount of oil changes is a function of how many run hours per year. And, um, you know, I can't give you the hours of outage per location, but it's not a big deal. That's something yes. the board would like to get. I can provide you with how many hours we're the co-op is down and therefore the unit would be running. That might be, and there's always an hour meter right on the machine. to tell you how long it's running. Yeah, I don't know that we need all that detail, but historically we've done twice a year. Cliff? Yeah, another point to be aware of in the contract, if you go with the twice a year inspection, the state inspection cost is, uh, which is mandated by the state, is incorporated into that charge for the twice a year uh, servicing. Uh, if you opt for the once a year servicing, then you pay an additional hundred dollars per unit for the state inspection. Yep. Thank you, Bill, for your input. That was mm -hmm. good to know. And I know that the I know the one at the town office, I believe, is set up. The same way it's on um, propane. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an auto start. Yeah, yeah, because I've been, I've been there when it used to come on once a week. And the difference in price, so for people who are playing along at home and watching our movie, is five ninety nine, or yeah, five ninety nine or five sixty nine if you pay early for program number one, and that's the annual service. 
and 898 or 853 if you pay early on the two visits. So the Delta is $300. Right, and 200 of that 300 is the state annual, annual certificate or inspection. Yeah, seems totally worth it to me. Yeah. I, so, I had a point. Am I on mute or not? No, you no, can you're hear good, me. Rose, go ahead. <laughs> um, on both pages of this contract, it says that prices quoted apply to the following Callis Vermont Municipal Building. And that's what it says on both pages. And so I don't know if that's an error that they meant on one page, it should say the municipal building, and on the other page, it should say the Callis Elementary School, or did, think, are they just gonna send us one of these and then they're sending the school district the other one? I think what they mean, I think that they're including this school as a municipal building. Oh, okay. This is this is the this is the similar contract to what we've gotten in previous years, and they both say municipal building. I believe so. I'd have to go back and look. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but so it's per the prices are per unit. Right. Okay. Okay. Right, because the total. Total yep. invoice is for, I just had it a second ago. It seems like it was $1,700 maybe. Let me find it and I can tell you. No, that's okay, Denise. It's just double the numbers here. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. So I will I will make a motion now. Well, here it is. I, I make a motion that we approve for both for our for one device for one unit um, at the two year plan twice a year maintenance program. Uh, is there anything else I have to include in that? For the town office building. For the town office building that we authorized and needs to sign on behalf of the board. Second. Okay. Any further discussion or questions? All right, Rosie, ready to vote? Sure. Aye. I'm an aye. Sharon? Aye. Cliff? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we're done with that. Thank you, folks. And we're and so then who specifically says so Katie can capture our two dues? Who is gonna let the school know that it's their job to pay the other one? Um, I am going to communicate with Sandra and see if she has a contact there um it might be sandy savard i'm not sure who sent out um the email wanting us to pay the school share here i think it might have been her i'd have to double check oh i missed that so actually that request yep not just that we got the bill okay katie's got her hand up katie I just wanted to make sure i captured it correctly because at first there was a discussion about having the motion include the, the half part, but I wrote Sharon Wynn Fannin made a motion that the board approve the contract for one unit maintenance at the year, at the twice yearly maintenance program for the town office building and to authorize the chair to sign on behalf of the board. Is that correct or does the motion need to include anything about the half split? The half is one unit instead of two. Got it. Okay. Thanks. And then, De and Denise, you're going to connect with Sandra and between the two of you, someone will communicate back to the school. Right. Awesome. All right. So that's done. Um, let's talk about, and it's only, I don't want to jinx this, but it's only almost 830. Um, so let's talk about staff bonuses. Normally we give a $250 bonus to road crew office staff. And any, any thoughts and on that? are we going to do select boards separately? We already did that. For the minutes, is it recorded somewhere? 
Um, Ours wasn't a bonus, it was just the stipend. It's just an annual stipend that we- And that's in the budget. I gotcha. And so we and don't I'd have like, to specifically authorize it. Right, and I'd like to have Katie included as someone who receives a bonus. So we've got um, the road commissioner, two road crew. There's Ed, who's been um, our temporary. Um, the town clerk town treasurer, assistant town clerk treasurer, and our recording secretary. And do we have a specific budget for bonuses or are we just, what have we done historically? Historically, we've just done the bonuses and it's come out of the um, salary lines. And what have we, what has been the amount of the bonus historically? Um, as I said, said before, 250. Sorry, Denise. Yeah, it's okay. What? Okay. That's okay. Um, it's 250. I know um, a few times we've only given maybe half to somebody that's been a temporary road crew person. Um, I think Ed has really stepped up. Uh oh, Rose faded out again. Fading roses. Fading roses, I guess. Um, but given the circumstances currently, um, I think it might not hurt to give him the full bonus amount. Cliff? So these bonuses are paid out based upon um, service provided over a period of time. Do we do we have an idea in mind of what period of time we're paying this bonus out for? It's usually just over the calendar year. Over the calendar year. So if someone was with us for the bulk of the calendar year, they would qualify for the bonus? I know what you're getting at, and I've thought about that. Um, it's I'm very not sure how to discuss that right now. Yep, I would suggest uh, an executive session at some point. Okay, we could do that when we're done with everything else, but, and if whatever we decide, we can publicly report out after that. Yep. Um, is Rose trying to get back on? Um, no, but um, this is interesting. Someone just popped in the waiting room, Mariana Constantine. Constantine. Oh, that's, I believe that's the tenant. That's the Marianne Truman. And yep. we're all done. Uh, and so, she's left. She's left the waiting room. Okay. And we still don't know about Rose. And she's probably having, based on what she told us earlier, she's having internet issues. Yeah. Oh, now Bill's gone. Yep. <laughs> um. Well, we could go ahead and vote because there's three of us to vote. If somebody would like to make a motion. Yeah, I would, I would move we pay bonuses to um, existing uh, staffers of the town of Callis as we've discussed. Does that include the part-time staff, uh, Ed Rowell, who we have relied on so heavily? I, I wanna make sure we call them a temporary. Temporary, yes, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and does that include Katie? Yes. Okay. All right, I would second the motion. Are you ready to vote? Sharon? Aye. aye. I'm an aye. Cliff? Aye. Aye, aye. All right. Um, I don't know what to tell you about Central Vermont Solid Waste Management. That's kind of a John thing. Do you have any um, Cliff updates on, you kind of had an update on IT, um, town hall and Judy's comments. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, no, we managed to get uh, every the wheels rolling on everything that we discussed for the uh, Elger grant program. Um, and uh, moving forward accordingly, Judy pretty much gave a summary of where everything else is at. Um, so it's, it's good stuff. Yep. Yeah, it was a all hands on deck, good team effort.
Um, any update on Friends of Town Hall that you want to give us? Yeah, um, nothing to report there. Okay. Like, like I say, they've kind of taken hiatus from meetings until the new year, so probably won't have any more updates. Okay, very good. Um, and I have to admit that I fell on my face in having time to review the minutes from the past few meetings. So if, if everybody else has and you want to move forward, that's on me or for not having done it, or we can postpone. I uh, used the time when I was uh, outside of the meeting room to start looking at them. Um, and, I'm, and I agree we're not ready to um, approve them. One thing uh, that I'll just say out loud is I'm, I was actually stuck on the fiber update and Katie, I'm sure this is what we prob this is what we do to you. Um, but the but the the so we talked about the elder grant, and then we talked Hi. about FCC funds. <laughs> and, and I don't. And there's got to be like two different topics in there. So if you if you can either listen again and, and tease them out so that they're captured separately or involve somebody like David Healy who actually under, would understand those two different topics so that the record is really clear. Um, I think, I don't know, for people like me who barely understand it the first time around to have, have the minutes be clear is, is, is the best hope I have. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Healy. Maybe we could agree to review the minutes. Um, First thing on the 19th when we meet and make sure we get them caught up. Yep. Um, so Rose, while you were disconnected, we approved the bonuses. Okay. And there wasn't any much other updates. Um, Cliff's, Cliff just reiterated what Judy said about the elder grant funds and IT and that's kind of where we're at. We did have brief, we briefly had Marianne Constantine Truman appear in the waiting room, but then she left. Oh. So I think, I think we're um, pretty much done, except for we need to go into executive session to discuss. Before, items. actually, Denise, before we go into executive session, one of the things that I noticed when I was going through those minutes from the last meeting is a flag that we were going to have on a future agenda item, the Maple Corner Historic District. Do I have that right? We did that. We had, that was on last meeting. I mean the CLG? Oh, because we had a special meeting on the 7th. So we, so we well, this we, is from November, the, the special meeting on the November 30th. It says, am I, did we have yeah. revisit it? Yes. You did. Okay. We did on the seventh. Okay. Oh, okay. Are you good with that? Yep. Okay. Very good. All right. Um, Cliff? Yeah. I, before we uh, break off going to executive session, I want to uh, thank Hans for his continued participation and attending these meetings. Like I've said before, it's always great when we have uh, interested parties in the community to keep keep their eyes on us as it were. Hans, yeah. uh, do you have any questions or anything we could clarify for you? Is he still there? No, no, uh, things. Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, last, last time I had some internet trouble. Um, no, I just, it's, it's just nice to listen um, and, and learn more. And um, sometimes I look up things while y'all are talking so I can so I can understand what's happening. I'm interested in uh, what I've heard about town meeting day because I actually haven't participated in one yet. So this will be uh, a first one for me. Oh, good. Great. Well, this definitely will be your, helps your... to attend the meetings that we have as we discuss what's going to be on the warning at the uh, town meeting. And yeah, um, anytime you have a question in the course of the meeting, feel free to pipe up. Yep, and it's nice to have a new set of eyes on 
town meeting and the warning and stuff like that. So thank you. So, uh, right, so can we of course, a, yeah, it's a uh, my pleasure. Right, can we have a motion to go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter? So moved. I'll second, second. it. Second at 8.30 p.m. All right, Ro uh, Sharon? Aye. I'm an aye. Cliff? Aye. And Rose? Rose? Aye. Okay, thank you, Katie. Can this meeting be all put into one one minutes from top to bottom, or do you need it broken up because there was the executive session at the beginning? And we might want to put the board of health meeting um, separate, so there's a clear record of those minutes. Can you do that? Was was there an adjournment, or would it be then like that the beginning part and the ending part were continuations? Is that right? I think we did adjourn the board of health meeting. I mean, the, was, the select yeah. board meeting before that. It was, we put it, we put um, the select board, the rest of the select board meeting on hold pending okay. the board of health meeting. Sorry, okay. I'm sorry it's so confusing this time. That's okay. I might just send it to, to someone to just take a peek and see if I got the names right who were supposed to be board of health, et cetera. Okay, yeah, you can send it to me. I'll look at it. Okay, thank you. Good All night, right, everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You, thank you, Katie. I'll, I'll ask her later. If she the wants. recording has stopped. Link to